Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Voynich Tude, and this is MB12 for Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. Broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, the Progressive Liberal Party releases its national plan. Find out what the Prime Minister thinks about it. An f and candidate's nomination called into question. A power outage at the new magistrate's court, plus a grieving mother recounts a shooting at her son's funeral. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your MB12 starts right now. Joining us. Two weeks before the May 7th general election, the Progressive Liberal Party last night released its national plan. Vision 2030 is a nearly 200 page document which lays out the opposition's plans for the country if it becomes the next government. Well, Prime Minister Hubert Ingram says the PLP's manifesto isn't just late, it's lacking. Charisma Robinson has a story. Prime Minister Hubert Ingram last night downplayed the Progressive Liberal Party's blueprint for governance and criticized the party for releasing the document two weeks before the general election. The Progressive Liberal Party plans to tackle at least 14 key issues within its first 100 days in office if it wins the next general election. According to the party's Vision 2030, a Charter for Governance national plan released last night on its website, immediate action is needed on a number of fronts to counteract the position of many Bahamians who are in pain. In the nearly 200-page document, the PLP said it plans to address crime, education, health care, Care, mortgage relief, border control, job creation, gambling, financial services, the cost of electricity, taxes, and Grand Bahamas economy during the first 100 days of another administration led by Perry Christie. But following a rally in North Andrus last night, Ingram dismissed the PLP's national plan. I would have thought it's kind of late for a political party that's in opposition to release a manifesto two weeks before election, um, especially a party that said it was ready for an election preparing itself for an election, say we were late in calling the election, and yet they weren't ready. The FNM's manifesto has been out from the, from the day of nomination, um, and hard copies of the FNM manifesto will be distributed um, beginning this week. As for the PLP's plan to lower energy costs in this country, the Prime Minister says... They tried that before, and broke BEC. Broke BEC. Um, the public of the Bahamas is not going to be interested in any gimmick. Um, and false promises, promises that are unaffordable, that can't be sustained. While Ingram called the opposition's pledge to hold a referendum on gambling within its first 100 days in office good, he's not so impressed with the party's plan to take another look at the operation of liquefied natural gas plants. <laughs> well, one of their members got, got almost a million dollars the last time LNG was coming in fees, $900,000, making the application. $900,000 paid to one of their members, whose name I can call right now, but you won't, you won't publish it. When it comes right down to it, Ingram says the f and plan is all that matters. He says any apparent similarities with his party's plan and the PLP's would be a sign of copycatting. But I, I think it's kind of strange you'd be asked with their plan. I couldn't give tools with their plan. I have my plan. My plan will stand the light of day. My plan is a doable plan. We had a study done of the Defense Force needs, put together all of the officers um, who, who had experience and expertise, determined how many vessels they needed to have, what the increased manpower would be, and the following night, some scatterbrain idea that's got up in, in Perry's head, and he says, no, not 235 men, is what the needs are for 11 boats, 350 men. At the PLP mass rally last night, Christie told supporters that the party's plan took a lot of time and consultation as it is not just planning for the next five years, but for many years to come. He also promises to reinstitute a number of PLP programs, which he says were halted by the FNM government out of spite. If you want to take a closer look at the PLP's Vision 2030, you can log on to myplp.org. Reporting for NB12. I'm Charisma Robinson.
The Free National Movement says it fears that if the PLP is elected, its leader and deputy leader's relationship with the Bahamas Petroleum Company would impact whatever decision they make in relation to the company's bid to drill for oil in Bahamian waters. Last week, PLP leader Perry Christie confirmed that BPC benefited from advice he gave as a consultant for Davis & Co., the law firm that, that represents BPC. Here's what Mr. Ringroom had to say about that. When the decision is made, if a decision is made to drill for oil in the Bahamas, it must be a very thoughtful thing the Bahamas will be ready for it. It cannot be a compromised person who acted as a consultant, who got paid as a consultant from that company. All right? That's very yeah. terrible. I said what I said. I did not ask you what he said. So please, what I said. Now you can carry what he said too. But don't ask what he said. You just take what I say and then do what you like with it. The FNM has also asserted that senior members of the PLP who would have a say in granting the exploration license to BPC are also deeply involved with the company. On its website under company advisors, BPC lists the law firm Davis & Co. run by PLP Deputy Leader Philip Brave Davis as part of its Bahamian legal team. In other political news, the Democratic National Alliance is challenging the nomination of FNM candidate Monique Gomez. At the center of this issue is the date on her declaration of qualification. As Paige Ferguson tells us, the party is hoping she will be forced to drop out of the race for the South Beach seat by early next week. The Democratic National Alliance, which is challenging the nomination of the FNM's candidate for South Beach, Monique Gomez, says it's prepared to take this matter all the way to the highest court, if need be. They say they're looking to have a judicial review on this matter done before the May 1st early poll. According to attorney Wayne Monroe, who is also the DNA's candidate for Mount Moriah, the parliamentary commissioner had until 1 p.m. today to respond to a letter he sent him challenging Gomez's nomination. The DNA is challenging the FNM candidate's nomination because her declaration of qualification, which is a required form of nomination, is dated April 16, 2011. By law, the date on the form cannot be more than 90 days before nomination day, which was April 17. Monroe and the DNA are looking to have a judicial review of her nomination before the election, and they are seeking to have her name slashed from the ballot. We're not saying he must agree with us, but a responsible person in charge of election would provide a timely answer, because if we are not pleased with his answer, we will want to challenge it. If we are pleased with his answer, the FNM no doubt may, have, may want to challenge it and we have to fit all of this in before the advance poll on the 1st of May. We would, be seeking, we would be seeking judicial review of the decision to accept the nomination papers. On judicial review, you have rights of appeal to the Court of Appeal, indeed all the way to the Privy Council. We would want to take that step. Our news team spoke with Parliamentary Commissioner Errol Bethel today, who said that he has read the letter delivered to him. However, Bethel said he does not have the authority to reject the nomination now, since it has already been accepted. He said this matter can only be dealt with in election court, and that cannot be held right now, just days before the general election. In the meantime, the DNA's candidate for South Beach, Wallace Roll, said to avoid election court altogether, voters should not count Gomez on the ballot. Any vote for Monique Gomez and the Free National Movement in South Beach, I would say, would be a wasted vote because at the end of the day, we don't, I, well, we certainly would seek that she's not on the nomination ballot for the 7th of May. And um, if we need to go further, we intend to go further. So I would ask the people of South Beach not to vote for her. It's a wasted vote. Monroe said if every other part of the electoral process must be precise, then so should the nomination of candidates. He said the law is precise and the law should be followed. All you have to do is swear an oath that you are in fact eligible to be nominated, to be elected, and that document must be dated no more than 90 days before the nomination day. The question that has to be asked is, what were you doing when you got the document back that you didn't think to look at the date? Where was your head at that time? If you get into government and an important decision has to be made, how do we know your head won't be the same place that it was when you should have been looking 
to see that it says 2012 instead of 2011. The law also says that other nominated candidates can only challenge the nomination of another candidate at the time of nomination. However, the DNA says that Roll could not have made that challenge because at the time Gomez was nominated, he was not validly nominated himself. Reporting for MV12, I'm Paige Ferguson.